All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. And in today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at something that has been going around uh, as far as a possible treatment protocol for COVID-19. And that's something that's called the Math Plus Protocol. So today I'm going to take a look at it, kind of explain what's involved in this protocol and give you guys some of the information and some of the philosophies behind the purpose of the parts of the protocol. So hang tight with me and I'm going to go over all that stuff with you guys here today. But before we begin, if this is your first time to this channel and you'd be interested in more critical care educational content such as this video here, then I really invite you to subscribe to the channel below. Make sure you hit that bell icon though and select all notifications, that way you'll never miss out when I release a new lesson. And as usual, a quick shout out to all of our awesome Patreon subscribers. You guys have access to additional content that you can't find just on the YouTube channel here alone. And so a big thank you to you guys, and for the rest of you guys, if you'd be interested in showing additional support, then head on over to the Patreon page and, and take a look. And no worries if you don't, because truly you just watching the video, liking and sharing these videos, uh, that support really is appreciative as well. All right, and so with that said, let's go ahead and dive on into the lesson. Uh, but before we begin, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Watson, and this is ICU Advantage. All right, so as we get started here... The first thing I really want to go over is what is the Math Plus protocol? Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that this is just one option that's available as a treatment protocol for COVID-19. This is not the only protocol that's out there, and it's not the only treatment options that are out there as well. This is just one piece of a large, really unknown collection of possible treatment modalities, and it might be beneficial to COVID-19 patients. Now, as far as the Math Plus protocol, that this is really an early intervention treatment protocol for COVID-19 that was put together by a work group called Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care, or FLCCC. And they based this protocol on a collection of evidence and really best practices from various different sources when it came to the care of COVID-19 patients. And the FLCCC is composed of clinician scholars from critical care and emergency medicine, so definitely on the front lines dealing with this disease. And this protocol was really developed as people all around the world were looking for and really waiting for treatment options for COVID-19 patients. And so like I said, they took various evidence-based therapies and kind of significantly here involving components that were patent-free, inexpensive, and globally available, with the goal to really counteract the two primary problems that we see with this disease. The first one being the overwhelming and damaging inflammatory response, which is something that I've talked about in one of the past lessons here where I did the discussion covering the cytokine storm related to COVID-19. So if you haven't watched that, I'm going to link to that right up above here. But the other primary problem is going to be this systemic, severe, hypercoagulable state that's often causing organ damage. And again, to, to better understand this component of it, the last lesson that I just did was talking specifically about the coagulopathies that we're seeing with COVID-19. So again, I'm going to link to that lesson up above so that you can watch that if you haven't already. And so as we know, it's this dysregulated inflammatory response in combination with the coagulopathy that we see with these patients that's causing damage to the lungs and other organs. It's not the virus itself that actually kills people, but a combination of these two major pathologies. Now, the Math Plus protocol is designed to be used in the hospital setting. And one of the key takeaways with this protocol is really that timing is going to be key for its use. They really advocate for early aggressive therapy, and essentially time is of the essence in, in getting these medications, these therapies on board for the patient. Their goal with this protocol is to really initiate this within six hours of the patient presenting to the emergency department with the hopes of reducing ICU admissions, the ventilator usage, and really ultimately saving lives. And unfortunately, given the, the state of testing throughout the country at this point and the lag time that we're seeing on getting test results back, they really suggest that the protocol should be started on anybody that you have a high suspicion for COVID-19 existing. 
And these different treatment options used to be things that were only started once a patient was in the ICU. But at this point, we know that patients are showing up to the ED after they've already been home sick for a couple days, and they're now beginning to present with either shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. And so they probably already have some component of this dysregulated inflammation going on and the coagulopathy. And so this is why the goal is to get these patients started quickly, because the earlier we get the treatment going, the better the potential outcome. And as we all know, that these patients get sick and they end up going south and and not doing well pretty quickly. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about what the actual protocol is. Now, essentially, the MATH Plus protocol is essentially an acronym for the different treatment options that we want to utilize. And it's composed of really four different parts. The first is going to be the use of IV methylprednisolone. And this is where the M comes from. And this corticosteroid is really key to all this. Now, the use of methylprednisolone in Europe showed a reduction in mortality by 50%, and so it's also recommended by China, Korea, Japan, and Italy for its use. And we do know that this is a steroid-responsive disease, but the timing is critical for its effective use. And importantly, there are many studies that are showing the effectiveness of this medication, and it's more potent when we give it in IV form. Now, according to the protocol, there's a few different doses depending on what's going on with your patient. So the first is going to be if they have mild hypoxia, so if they're on less than 4 liters of oxygen. And in this case, they suggest giving 40 milligrams daily until they're off of oxygen. Now, next is going to be the patients with moderate to severe illness. And for these patients, they suggest giving 80 milligrams as a bolus, then giving them 20 milligrams every 6 hours IV push for a total of 7 days. There is an alternate to this to where we can give them 80 milligrams a day for seven days instead. And then once you reach day eight, you want to actually switch these patients over to oral prednisone and taper that off over six days. All right, the next part of the protocol is going to be our high-dose IV ascorbic acid or our vitamin C. And this is where the A in the protocol comes from. And so here we know that vitamin C is an antioxidant. And we know that high-dose antioxidants are effective when they're combined in this synergistic effect with steroids for treating inflammation. And for this, we want to be giving this IV 3 grams and 100 milliliters every 6 hours. And we want to maintain these high levels by, by giving it on this frequent basis. And for this, they suggest giving for 7 days or until the patient is discharged. All right, the next thing in this protocol is going to be our full-dose low molecular weight heparin, and this is where the H comes from. And the importance here is to try to prevent and break up clots that are found in the more advanced stages of the disease. Now, for this step, they divided it up into mild illness and moderate to mild illness, although I'm not real sure why they did because the dose was exactly the same and I couldn't find any additional information on that. But so essentially, if you have mild to moderate illness, then their recommendation is to give 40 to 60 milligrams daily. And this, they're just going to continue until discharged. Now, in this protocol, they don't specifically address patients with severe illness. And while it's not a part of this protocol, it is something that I discussed in that previous lesson on the coagulation disorder. And so just to kind of add in here that this might be where you're considering using full-dose unfractionated heparin systemically in these patients. Now, the fourth component is actually going to be our PLUS optional treatments. Obviously, this is where the PLUS is going to come from. And there's a couple things. There are a couple additional treatments that they've identified as a part of this protocol. Uh, The first of these is actually going to be thiamine or vitamin B1. And this is actually where the T, which we just skipped over, comes from. And the reason for their inclusion in this protocol is that thiamine supports the heart and the immune system. And they didn't have a dosage recommendation for this, but a lot of the evidence seems to point to giving 200 milligrams IV every 12 hours. Now, the next optional treatment that they included in here was actually going to be zinc. And the reason for this is that there is some belief that zinc may slow viral replication. There is some evidence to show that it may help speed up recovery for patients who get the common cold, which while this is a coronavirus, it's a very different coronavirus than what we're dealing with here. And again, they didn't give dosing recommendations, but what I found again from various sources is 75 to 100 milligrams daily. And finally, the last thing they've recommended as part of this protocol and the plus optional treatments is going to be vitamin D. 
And the reason for this is that studies have shown that the sickest COVID patients also had the lowest vitamin D levels. And they saw that countries with the highest mortality rates also had the highest levels of vitamin D deficiencies. So again, we know the difference between causation and correlation, um, but it seems that there may be some evidence to suggest that vitamin D may also help to prevent that cytokine storm. And again, they didn't give a dosing recommendation, but but depending on when you give it and the severity of illness, 2,000 to 4,000 units a day is a pretty good place to be. And the other thing about the plus and the math plus is that it really signifies that the the protocol is going to continue to be tweaked and improved over time, uh, as well as providers really should be adding things based on the, the patients that they're dealing with with their unique situation. So those things outlined here within the protocol are certainly not the only things that we want to be doing, but they feel like based on a lot of evidence on both COVID-19 and pre-COVID-19 studies that this study Stuff can be quite effective in treating patients. Again, time is of the essence with this here. All right, so that's essentially the protocol. Hopefully it makes sense uh, as far as what we're doing and why we're doing it. The last thing that I really want to go over is some treatment recommendations that they included in this for hypoxemia. Now they had a few recommendations in here, and it seems like a lot of this stuff is stuff that we're probably already doing anyways, but I did want to make mention of it because it is listed as a part of the, the Math Plus protocol that they have out there. Now, the first thing is going to be that if you have low sats on nasal cannula, you want to consider initiating heated high flow nasal cannula. And along with that, you don't want to hesitate to increase the flow on that as needed. I think this part here can cause a little bit of contention and controversy because there seems to be some inconsistency on whether or not we consider high flow nasal cannula to be aerosolizing. I've heard both sides of the argument, and I think we don't have any solid evidence to support one way or the other, which kind of tends to have us lean towards being a little bit more precautionary. But in the case of the protocol and some of the recommendations here, as well as other places, part of the reason that they are recommending this is because we want to try to allow this state of what they call permissive hypoxemia as our patients tolerate it. And the whole point of this is to try and prevent intubation based solely on our patient's hypoxemia. We're finding that once these patients end up on the ventilator, that they tend to stay on there for a long period of time. It also potentially is causing additional damage to the lungs of these patients. And in a lot of places, we're just not seeing good outcomes once we reach that point. So the goal is really to try to do everything we can to prevent having to intubate our patients if we don't have to. That said, if your patient is exhibiting excessive work of breathing, then we do want to intubate them at that point. And finally, the last recommendation they had is to utilize prone positioning to help to improve your patient's oxygen sats. And again, this is a, another thing that I did cover in a, a lesson previously, so I'm going to link to that one here talking about proning patients with COVID-19. But as many of us know, there's a lot of benefit in, in doing this, so I'm glad to see them make that recommendation here as well. All right, so that pretty much covers the, the Math Plus protocol. Like I said, this is just one possible protocol, one possible grouping of treatment modalities that uh, seem like they may, or based on some evidence, show that they're, they're having some success in treating COVID-19 patients. So as I said, I've seen a lot of talk about this. I've seen this come up in a lot of different places. So I wanted to make a video specifically addressing this so that if you guys heard it, that you knew what they were talking about. Uh, in all honesty, you're probably seeing a lot of this stuff being done already, but it kind of depends on the timing and when things are being initiated. And it helps to have an understanding of, of why it is that we're doing these different things. So hopefully this lesson helped you get to that point. Uh, I hope that you guys found the, the information useful. Uh, as always, if you did, please leave a like on the video down below it really goes a long way to help support this channel in terms of the YouTube algorithm. So I really appreciate that. Uh, make sure and subscribe if you haven't already, uh, as well as check out the Patreon page if you guys would be interested in showing additional support beyond YouTube here. Uh, otherwise, make sure and keep an eye out for the, the next lesson that I'll be releasing. In the meantime, though, make sure and check out a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here for you guys. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a wonderful day.